Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel. Um, something a little bit different uh, today. You're aware, of course, that uh, Linux is becoming incredibly popular and uh, the distribution of the minute would seem to be arch and arch based distributions. And uh, I hope I've contributed to uh, the popularity of Arch uh, a little bit in my own small way by, well, I, I've done a step-by-step -step traditional Arch install on my ThinkPad. I've uh, looked at the Anarchy uh, install script, uh, which I was quite impressed with. And, of course, I've gone for the full-blown uh, desktop environment, um, Endeavor OS, which I was also impressed with. A few people have said to me uh, over the course of the months that uh, there are other installers out there that are worth taking a look at, one of which is the Zen Installer. I believe it's been around for quite some time, and uh, I thought, well, why not? Let's give Arch a little bit of love. Uh, it seems to have been a few months since uh, I've looked at it. So... A couple of words first. Um, the purists amongst you will obviously be against anything uh, that simplifies the Arch installation process. Um, and I do understand that to some extent because the Arch installation, installing Arch in the Arch way, is not complicated. It can be a little bit time-consuming to get a system up and running. Not overly so, but... Uh, it would be nice sometimes if there was an easier method. And for someone like myself, who's done the Arch install the Archway multiple times, I would quite appreciate a quick script just to get a system reinstalled or onto a different system as and when I need it. And for new users to Arch, I don't think there's any problem if you just want an Arch system to play with uh, and to get used to it, uh, in using a simple installer. I was really impressed with the Anarchy installer, I have to say. Um, I'm definitely going to use that in the future. But I thought, why not give Zen a try? And let's just go, go over to the uh, split screen. Uh, I downloaded it from um, SourceForge, uh, where it says uh, it provides a full graphical point-and-click environment for installing Arch. Um, and it does indeed provide a full graphical point-and-click environment, albeit just one based on uh, a window manager, um, uh, but more than enough to actually get a system installed. And it offers a full range of desktop environments as well. One of the things that I was quite impressed with is it seems to actually be updated quite often. This latest ISO that I've just downloaded uh, was only uh, updated back in October of this year. And I downloaded the ISO, which was 848.3 gigs. Megabytes, should I say. Um, the guy behind it, if we go to his GitLab page, uh, is somebody called Spooky Kid MM who I believe translates uh, to somebody uh, called Josiah Ward. So thanks for all the work, Josiah. So let's give it a spin. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the Zen installer and see how it compares to something like the Anarchy installer. So you should see in front of you now uh, the VirtualBox interface. I've set up uh, an entry, a virtual entry for Arch Linux. I've given it the usual uh, 8 gig of RAM, two threads of my i5 processor. I've attached the Zen installer ISO to it, so it should boot off that. And I've set it to UEFI mode. If I can just clarify where those settings happen, you'll see that it's the middle click there. So let's boot and let's see what happens. Well, there's obviously the EFI boot menu coming up here. And uh, nice to see that uh, SSHA256 has been validated. 
Now, everything I've booted in EFI mode in VirtualBox has taken its time after selecting uh, the installer from the Arch menu or the EFI menu. It's something to do with VirtualBox's implementation of EFI. So we have to be a little bit patient. You may think that uh, when you're just getting this screen and nothing else is happening, that something has gone wrong. That's not necessarily the case. You just have to be patient. It will shortly boot and it will boot into what I assume is a very basic uh, open box window manager, which will take us through a list of questions to install Arch Linux. I believe that uh, EFI support is quite a recent uh, add-on to the Zen installer because it's been around for some time now. So I'll be in interested to see how well it does and my intention is to select automatic mode whenever possible. And here we go, it suddenly started booting. So, as per normal, we just have to give it a little while when booting in UEFI mode. It's strange, really. I mean, most new PCs come with UEFI, and uh, this is no different. Let's just see if I can put it into full screen mode from here. I don't know if it's going to work, but it's worth a shot. Ah, well, it must already have uh, the VirtualBox guest editions installed. So it's asking us at this point, uh, am I connected? Um, if not, uh, I need to connect. If I'm on wireless, I can use the Wi-Fi uh, network icon in the bottom right. But I'm going to be connected anyway because I'm using VirtualBox. So let's just plow ahead and hit yes. Would I like to connect to a VPN before I start the installation? Well, no, but thanks for asking. That could be useful. Let's see what else comes up. Not a lot so far. Uh, I would have thought after selecting no <laughs> that it would immediately launch. But uh, strange, nothing's actually happened. Ah, here we go. So, obviously just sorting itself out. Uh, would I like to use automatic partitioning, or do I want to partition the disk myself? Well, I want to go for automatic wherever possible. The whole point of having uh, an installation script is to make things easy. So, automatic partitioning and OK. It's recognised I've got one disk in there, SDA. I'm just going to click OK. Select the drive I want to use. Well, there is just the one, so OK. And it's now telling me it's going to erase everything on the disk. Am I sure that I want to continue? Yes, I am. Let's go for it. Well, that's encouraging. It says it's creating partitions for UEFI, so it's obviously uh, spotted that I've booted in UEFI mode. And it's now asking me to select my country. I'm not overly sure from memory whether this is going to be GB or UK. Let's just have a look down at the bottom. No, it would appear it's GB. Well, that's absolutely fine. Let's just get to it again. Not the easiest thing to keep a track of, but there we go. GB. Okay. I now need to set my locale, which is there, EN, GB, UTF-8. Would I like to uh, change my keyboard model? The default is PC-105. No, I'm just going to keep it as is. And select uh, your layout, a two-character country code. Now, I'm presuming this is for X rather than uh, uh, the terminal. Yes, there is no UK option there. So again, it's going to be GB. And we'll click OK. Would you like to change your keyboard variant? Uh, no, I don't think so. Did you see your key map in any of the options above? No. Select your key map. 
Rice. Uh, it seems to be spending an awful lot of time talking about my key map. I'm pretty happy with uh, the standard variant. In fact, you know, ah, there we go. I'll hit UK. Right, set my time zone. Well, I'm in Europe. And I need to select London as the region. And I think I'm going to go for local time rather than UTC. I need to enter a host name, so let's call it, I don't know, why not just Zen? Please enter a, u uh, a username for the new user. Okay, OTB, why not? Enter a password. Oh, that's for the root user. And repeat. And enter a password for OTB. Okay. What do I want for my shell? Well, I'll pick bash. One of these days I must explore ZSH, but I've never looked at it so far, so now's probably not the time to do it. And what kernel do I want to use? Normally I would just go for the standard Arch kernel, but I believe the Zen kernel is optimised for desktop use. So for this... Uh, this test, I'm just going to select that. It's detected I'm running in VirtualBox. Would I like to install the VirtualBox utilities? Excellent. Thanks for asking. Yes, I would. Would you like to add the revenge repo to your pamac.conf? It contains a few extra packages, such as Spotify and pamac. Okay. All good. Would I like to enable multi-lib on, um, multi on my system? Uh, yes, I would, please. And would I like to install a graphical package manager? Uh, yeah, why not? Choose Octopi if you're using a Qt desktop, or per Mac if you're using GTK. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, do you know, I think I'm going to try uh, installing KDE Plasma here, so I'm going to choose Octopi. Would I like to install support for the AUR? In other words, yay. Yes, I would, please. And would I like to install printer support? Why not? Right, what display manager would uh, I like to use? Well, normally I'd go straight for Light DM, but I believe KDE uses SDDM. So we'll select that. And then we shall go down here and select the KDE desktop. Um, so we've got Plasma, or Plasma KDE with applications. I don't really want all of the KDE applications, so I'm just going to select Plasma. Would I like to install Firefox? Yeah, that would be helpful. And I will choose the English variant, Let's just scroll down here, and there we go. There's the option. Would I like to install LibreOffice? Yes, please. Do I want the fresh, constantly moving version, or do I want the static version? I'm going to choose still the static version. And again, I get to uh, choose my uh, language variant. So, there we go, LibreOffice still, ENGB. Right, now if I'd like to select more uh, applications, I need to choose one of these categories or more and follow along. So, let's have a look at Internet. Right, let's install Chromium. Is there anything else there that I need? No, nothing I don't think at the moment. What about media? Let's see what's there. Oh, yeah. Well, let's install the GIMP and VLC before we go any further. Oh, and KDEN Live. Why not? Office, we've already installed. What about utilities? 
let's install a H top and the Terminator um, terminal. I see we can install VirtualBox from here. Oh, NTFS 3G. WireGuard. Network Manager Applet. Okay. And what about customization? Let's have a quick look. Oh, right. So it gives me some themes. Let's choose the Papyrus icon theme. Is there anything else? Or oh, in the arch icon theme. I think that will do us for the time being. And so we're finished. Let's click OK. Would you like to install the bootloader? <laughs> well, yes, please. Where? Well, I'd like to install it on that drive. Do I have any other operating systems here? No, I don't. Please click yes to begin the installation. So, I'm looking at my watch now. It's five past one in the afternoon. Let's click yes and see how long this takes. I'm going to pause this in a minute and we will come back and have a look once the system has been installed. So the time is now 13.18. The installation has finished. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this. I'm going to shut down the uh, installer. I'm going to remove the ISO from VirtualBox and we'll come back once I've booted into the install system. So uh, that's the installer shut down. So hopefully everything is now installed. So let's hit start and see what happens. Do I want to switch to full screen straight away? Why not? And we're just hitting OK, and we're watching the system boot. Remarkably fast, as this is uh, EFI, and it's booted straight into the Login Manager. Uh, I see the layout up here is actually set as US. Um, nevertheless, we can no doubt change that. Let me just log in and see where we get to. There we go. Plasma's starting up. And hopefully, in short order, we should have a nice, clean Plasma desktop in front of us. Exactly the same default wallpaper as you saw when uh, I installed uh, Kubuntu earlier this week. So let's see what it's actually installed here. If we go to Applications, what's it got there? It's got a few development uh, icon view and uh, the data engines viewing tool. Okay, fine. Education, it's got maths. Okay, the formula editor. And in science, again, the formula editor. What about graphics? It's got the GIMP and the LibreOffice drawing program. In Internet, we have Chromium and Firefox, which is exactly what I expected. In Multimedia, we've got the VLC Media Player and we've also got KDEN Live. There we have under Office, uh, the LibreOffice uh, suite. Then we have settings. Okay, great. System. All the standard things that you would expect in, in there. Utilities. And we've actually got Terminator there, which is uh, what I asked it to install as a terminal. So all good so far. Has it got the key map right? Well, let's just have a look again in the uh, main menu. If I search for keyboard, does this bring anything up? Ooh. If I could spell, no, it doesn't, but I'm sure it's in system settings.
input devices, layouts, and it has indeed installed the keyboard uh, in the standard English format that I'm looking for. Well, I'm not going to go through this particular installation uh, at all because reviewing Plasma is not what this was about. It was all to see if we could actually install um, a desktop environment using the Zen installer. And it would seem to have done that without a problem. Just as a, a final point before I shut this down and we go and have a chat, I'd like to see what it's actually done as far as uh, the UEFI installation is concerned. So let's launch uh, Terminator. I'll make that full screen. And let's have a look at the F-Stab. If I make that a little bit bigger. Okay, I can see that what it's actually done here is it's mounted the uh, VFAT um, EFI petition directly onto boot. So if I CD into boot, let's have a look what's there. Okay, we have a directory called EFI. And I'm quite interested to see it hasn't created a directory called Arch Linux. Let's CD into Linux and see if the bootloader's there. No, it isn't. What about in boot? Aha. So it's actually mounted uh, the boot directory, or it's rather it's mounted the EFI partition on boot, and it's created a separate directory called boot, where our bootx64.efi is actually located. That's quite a good way of doing things if you're in VirtualBox, because that's where VirtualBox looks for the bootloader which would probably explain why we haven't had a problem with this uh, installation in terms of launching it in VirtualBox. I normally do not mount uh, the EFI partition directly on boot. I would tend to mount it on the boot forward slash EFI directory, a separate directory, because I like to keep my kernels... Uh, safely on an ext4 partition but either way works okay so let's just shut down the terminal all's good let's go and have a chat about this so that was the uh, arch linux zen installer uh, nice and straightforward a very simple graphical uh, user interface point and click all the way and we ended up with um, a KDE Plasma desktop uh, environment drawing from the standard Arch repos. Um, I love it. As far as the look and feel is concerned, I think my preference would still go to the Anarchy installer. Um, but certainly I didn't come across any problems. The only minor glitch that I noticed uh, was after the installation had taken place. Although Octopi seemed to be installed, it wouldn't launch. Um, I'm not going to blame the installer for that, as it's likely that that could be something to do with Arch itself at the moment. Um, but something that can be easily sorted out anyway, and it does get you up and running. So, uh, another option for Arch fans, and that's all this is. It is one more option. I'm quite interested in exploring these Arch install scripts and I may look at a few others over the uh, Christmas period so we can do a, a little bit of a, a review and a weighing up which is the most efficient. Um, but we'll see how that pans out over the coming days and weeks. But for now, that's all. Have a great day and uh, I will no doubt see you later in the week. Cheers. Thank you.